This is my first ever Roblox game. It's an obby with numerous stages, a sick map, checkpoints, and more. But if you watched my last video, you would have known that I said this. Alright, so now that we've updated the game, I'm going to quit. I plan on working on bigger and better projects in the future to try and expand my skills. So yeah, it's time to move on to a new journey. So my plan is that I'm going to make a clicker simulator. But wait, before you click off, the reason I'm doing this is entirely for a learning experience, not to make a crappy cash grab. Let's begin. I started by making a simple leader stat that creates itself whenever the player joins. After publishing the game and enabling studio access to API services, you can see that our leader stat is working. Then I made the script load the player's data if it has any by using the get async event thingy. Now we need to make the script save the player's data whenever they leave. 300 hours later, after a few modifications and a lot of biscuits, we now have a working leader stat script. Let's go! Alright guys, guess what we need to make next? It's the actual clicking system, you despicable obnox. First, I made this script that gives the player a multiplier so we can decide how many clicks each click actually gives. I then made this placeholder button to click on, but don't worry, we'll change this ugly picture soon. I inserted a local script into the button and made a remote event so the click from the client is registered on the server. If you don't know what the difference between a client and a server is, a server is what the singular player sees, such as your own mouse cursor or a GUI that only you can see. The server is what all players can see. So if I open GUI on the server, all players will be able to see it. Pretty simple really. I then made the simple debug, which basically disallows and allows the click function to happen every 0.05 seconds. This is to prevent you pesky little auto-clicker nerds. Wait, 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 wait. I know I said that I'm making this game as a learning experience, but maybe that wasn't the whole truth. Don't know how to code though. Dang bro. Like you are the equivalent of a participation trophy. What? <laughs> what does that even mean? You should come with a warning label. Alright bro, this kid's taking the mick! You're so fat, I bet your mouth is a black hole. I'm not even black. How can he see me in real life? You're the reason pools need lifeguards. Yo, I can literally swim. You don't stop meeting my horrible expectations. And you can't even code. Oh, do you look at that? His messages are now gone. So yeah, that's kind of why I'm doing this challenge. Anyways, I made it that whenever the button is clicked, it fires a remote event to change the click's value. Let's code that now. As you can see, I connected a function to whenever the event was fired and added one to the click value. Pretty simple really. So now I'm clicking this button and as you can see, my leader stat value is going up. Also, does anyone know what this means? The leader stats are still saving whenever I leave, but it keeps saying that. But uh, I don't really care, at least it still works. Now we basically have a working simulator game. I added two more leader stats into our script, one for rebirth and one for gems. Another 5,000 years later. Alright, so after a ton of coding with the help of devblocks, I finally managed to get the rebirth and gem system to work. As you can see, we have this terrible GUI which I'll be changing soon, and if we magically get 100 clicks and press the rebirth button, we now have a clicks multiplied by the amount of rebirths that we have. I swear that took me so long! Next up, we're going to create an upgrade menu where you can spend the gems earned from rebirthing. I asked my Discord whether to make it an actual PUI or just a GUI that you click on, and the in-game shop option kind of won, but I would have preferred to make the GUI, so we're going to do both. First, I added a new remote event and inserted a part that we can move in the future. I then made some simple code which fires the remote event to the client whenever the part is touched. I also made this goofy UI, which is temporary by the way. And then after a bit of coding and debugging, we have the rebirth buttons finally working. The gems were spent and the value of the upgrade increased by 1. We'll be adding the actual upgrade soon and we can implement the GUI later. First, the more rebirths upgrade. I made it so that whenever you buy a rebirth, it will cost a little more to buy it again. And if you want to get more buttons, you can open the upgrade menu to spend more gems on more buttons. Pretty simple really. I then made the GUI that opens the upgrade menu and now we can work on the actual UI icons. Alright listen, I would make the UI icons myself, but... Okay, I'll just hire someone to make them for me. Ugh, to AI it is. I asked being image creator for some vectors and cooked up these icons. I imported them into Roblox and replaced the ugly buttons. Now our game's looking fresh. I also made some frames for our menus and now the UI should be done. I then made this UI to show how many clicks the player has and with some simple code we have a working counter thingy. 
I added the sick pop-up for whenever the player clicks, and the game is coming together very well. I'm sorry about all the technical scripting so far, but we gotta do it, whether it's now or later. So let's make the portals. The portals will take you to different worlds where you can get better clicks. But soon, Jerry, how can a world give better clicks? You'll find out soon. We'll be adding a special feature. I inserted a temporary portal part. Inside this part, I inserted a surface GUI so the player can see how much the portal costs. I then put this padlock icon to show that the portal is locked. After some coding, we have it so that when you have 100 rebirth, the padlock disappears and you can use the portal. Nice. Yet another 69,420 years later. You guys remember when I said buy one? We'll be adding the actual upgrade soon and we can- Well, I kinda did it. I added a clicks multiplier which increases the amount you click for every click, which is good for progression. I added a walk speed to upgrade cause why not? And I added a gems multiplier to increase the amount of gems you get per rebirth. If that's jam school, I swear- Ha 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 ha. Decent game, not. Ew, brother ew. Make a map man. Fair enough, I should probably do that. What kind of game has no map? And by the way, you only get two. Okay, I'll be generous. Three hours to build a map. Three hours? I'll be back. How the hell am I meant to make a map in three hours? Uh, who cares about the guy? I'll take as much time as I want. I said three hours, boy. What the? How did he? I guess we're making a whole map in three hours then. All right, so here's my concept for the map. We're gonna have a central circle area with a podium with my channel on it because free promo. The upgrade shop and help area will be sat behind it along with more paths circulating around. There will be a bridge which goes to the portal section that goes over a river which comes from the waterfall. And there will be a random tunnel because why not? And the blank grassy areas we can scatter some random assets to fill up the space. I started by changing the lighting settings from this to this. And then I began making the path for the map. I then made a hole in the ground by using some union and negate stuff and then I filled the hole with low poly water from the toolbox. Now time to surround the map. To add more depth to the map, I duplicated the borders and made them bigger so it seems less like you're trapped in a box. After making a few adjustments, we now have a finished border. For the last bits of depth, I added these mountains in the back. I then cooked up this beautiful waterfall and made a tunnel out of some rocks. I opened up Blender and made this simple bridge and exported it into Studio. Next, I made this upgrades building, which I actually think is pretty good, and once again exported it into Studio along with some other assets. Very nice if you ask me. I added one of these shiny circle thingies, an outline, some text, and that should be the upgrade shop done. Let me know in the comments if you like the outline or not. For the help area, I just popped together a bunch of assets from older projects next to a question mark. I know, very green. I put together a bunch of planks and stuff for the platform of the portals. I then modelled a simple portal frame and put our portal part from earlier inside it. I also changed it to a thousand rebirth because I think a hundred is too less. Time to add decoration. First, I scattered a bunch of trees around the map, and you guys remember this fan that Jamscreen made in this video? Yeah, I just yoinked it and put it in the map along with some other assets. I put a few border parts for more height, and also scattered these rocks along the side of the river. I then made this random crafts area, I have no idea why, and I put down these temporary pads since we might be using these spaces in the future. I also added these benches cause yes, and last but not least, the podium. Thumbnail Tutorial What you wanna do, is you wanna open Photoshop, or a favourite knockoff, Photo P. Make sure you have a 512 by 512 canvas. We're then gonna wanna pull up an, an image of our game. Let's blur that by using the Gaussian blur. Okay, now we have this. Let's whip out our trusty cursor icon. Add a drop shadow. Add in our, our lovely lines. Oh, it's spawned out. But as you guys can see, it's a bit too big. Go to edit. Go to transform and we're going to distort it and we're going to bring it inwards bring this side inwards but guys we don't want it to be on top of this so we're going to move this layer on top looking fresh nope that looks like poo that also looks like poo on this we can add a drop shadow a stroke put a bit of text and write new just like that we have a nice icon. Last but not least, I made the numbers have an abbreviation so the numbers get a bit smaller. So with that, we have a fully functioning simulator. Throughout this journey, I've learned a lot to do with scripting, GUI and more. If you guys want to see new worlds, new features, possibly even pets, then get this video to 400 likes. I know it's a lot to ask for, but we can do it. And trust me, 
the update would be sick. Also, shout out to Lingus for winning my game jam that I hosted in my Discord server. You should join it, by the way. And if you want to play the game, the link should be in the description. But it is kind of in its beta phase. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!